Good morning, church. You're now tuning in live to Destiny C3 TV. So wherever you are, in your room, in your couch, come on, let's worship God together. Come on.
deserve all praise and glory. For you are mighty, Lord God. For your name is great, Lord Jesus.
city of Maradi, we be a city. Oh, we're gonna break every chain, Lord God. It's holding us back, Lord God, a chain of fear, Lord God. It's holding us back, Lord God. We break it this morning, Lord Jesus. standing at your place in your homes why don't you just lift up right now your hands lift up your voices right now and call upon the name of the Lord amen the name above all other names hallelujah come on right now just just begin to worship him in this place just begin to seek him right now seek him with all your heart and not just blabbering words that comes out of your mouth but speaking words from your heart from your minds from what you believe from what you stand upon right now speak it right now as you call upon his name as you believe that he is a great and mighty God There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Come on, sing it again. There is power. verses 13 to 16 then they said then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved 
them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, and broke away their chains. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he breaks down gates of bronze and he cuts through bars of iron. And I just want to encourage you this morning as you stand there worshiping God. As we just move through this season that we are in right now. As men, as human beings, human nature will succumb to fear. Human nature will succumb to anxiety and doubt. But I want to tell you something. The Lord's will never fails right now. His unfailing love is forever. Nothing can come in between the Lord's love for us. We are the apple of His eye. Amen. Amen. We are the apple of His eye. So let us believe right now that whatever we're battling with currently right now, whether it is the health situation, whether it is the economy, whether this season has affected our jobs, affected our businesses right now, let us pray, believing that God will make all things beautiful in His time. Let us pray right now that those chains of fear, that those chains of doubt, anxiety be broken in the name of Jesus. For we know His promises are true. We know that He is a tower of strength and refuge. We know that we can hide under the shadow of His grace. And let us stand upon that this morning. Let us leave everything that is not of Him, that is not of above, which is not in accordance to His word. Let us lay it down right now at His feet. Hallelujah. Praise God. For we know He is a great and mighty God. For we know that He will make all things beautiful in His time. In His time. Hallelujah. And as we partake of the communion today, we just want to remember the finished work of Christ. We want to remember the cross. We want to remember that because of what happened at the place of skull, when Jesus died, his body was broken, his blood was shed, that victory is already ours. No matter what the circumstances, no matter what the situation, no matter the state of our political affairs, And as we partake of this communion, as we take this bread in our hands, let us remember that finished work of Christ. That this bread signifies His body that was broken for you and me. That we are now set apart from the rest of the world that we do not have to stand in victory. Sorry, we do not have to stand in fear. We do not have to stand in doubt. We do not have to stand where the world stands without hope. For hope belongs to our Lord. Amen. Amen. That we stand in victory in all the days of our lives, no matter what 
the womb may bring us. For Jesus has said, in this world we will have troubles. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Amen. Praise God. Let us partake of the bread right now. Let's partake right now of the cup, the drink that signifies His blood. The blood of the Lamb that has washed our sins. Hallelujah. Let us partake of the cup right now. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I trust you are blessed this morning. Praise God, it's so great to see each and every one of you tuned in right now to Destiny C3 TV. Hallelujah. Let's give God a clap offering in this place. Amen. Uh, we're going to partake of the offering right now. Freely as we worship, freely we want to give, and we want to give with cheerful hearts. Father Lord, we just want to thank you and praise you for this time. We want to thank you and praise you that we were able to still come to worship you despite of the situation, despite of the, the laws right now preventing us from congregating, we want to thank you that we are still able to worship you as a community. And as we give to your kingdom, we pray we will give with cheerful hearts. Bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. is not just merely about movements. You know, in life, it, a lot of times that we think that by moving, we are doing something. But if you, are, if you don't have a focus, it is just going to be wasted effort. Yep, if momentum, is, you know, if movements are not directed, it will counter against each other. And at the end, it stays where it is. So no matter how, you know, you, you try to go to the left or to the right, if you have no direction, you're just running in all directions. At the end of it all, you're just going to come back to the same place. So that momentum has to be directional. It must have a focus. Progress is only progress when it is heading towards something. Amen? So it is not just about doing things. It must be resulting in something that you are looking forward to. If momentum is not gravita gravitating toward a goal, you will never find purpose and fulfillment. But when there is purpose, the drawing of energy will bring an internal fulfillment. So that's why when, when, when you are focused, when there's momentum, you will find fulfillment even though it's a lot of things to do. You are, keep moving, but yet you know you're heading somewhere. So at the end of the day, I just want to encourage us, don't waste energy and getting nowhere. We must focus our energy to where God has intended for us individually and also as a church. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor you are heading somewhere. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 11 this morning and let's read from verse 25. Genesis chapter 11 verse 25 and it says this, that after he begot or rather, start from verse 24. Nahor lived 29 years and begot Terah. And after he begot Terah, Nahor lived 119 years and begot sons and daughters. Now Terah lived 70 years and begot Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. So this is the genealogy of Terah. Terah begot Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Haran begot Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in his native land in Ur of the Chaldeans. Then Abraham and Nahor took wives. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the, daughter of, the father of Milcah and the father of Ishka. But Sarai was barren, she had no children. And Terah took his son Abraham and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abraham's wife, and they went out with them from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan, and they came to Haran and dwelt there. Now the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. If you were to read from verse 25 all the way to 32, in that short 
passage or short, you know, uh, uh, you know um, what he calls verses, you will find that Terah's name was mentioned seven times. Seven times in about eight verses. This shows significance when the Bible re repeatedly recorded his name. So a lot of times when we read Genesis, especially in 11, uh, chapter 11 and chapter 12, we tend to always focus on Abraham. On Abraham. But to this morning, I want us to look at Terah. Because I believe that as his name was repeated so many times, God has a message for us about Terah. Everybody say Terah. So we all know that Terah was Abraham's father. And this, and you know, Terah, he was a Shemite, a descendant of Shem, one of the sons of Noah. And the Shemites, they were nomads, they traveled from place to place in search of better pastures. Pastures, all right? And then it tells us that Terah, he took his son, Abraham, and his grandson, Lord, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law, Sarai, his son, Abraham's wife, and they went out with them from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. Canaan is a land of promise and it's also a land of possessions. Ur was a place of decision. Why? In Terah's case, it was the death of his son that pushed him out. Haran died in the land, in Ur, the land Ur of the Chaldeans. So Terah came to a place that he made the decision to get out from that place. Friends, decisions will only get you started. The tragedy in this whole entire account was that Terah, he settled in Haran. He was supposed to go to Canaan, the land of promise, the land of possessions. But he stopped in a place called Haran. See, all of us, we start from the place of decision. There must be a death of something. Either the death of our old self, the death of a relationship, or death of certain things that will push out to make that decision. Yes, we're going to move forward. We're going to move from there and not stay where we were. Where we were. So we take that step and we start moving. But the problem is this, to get to the land of promise, to promise is a long journey. And along the way, a lot of people, they settle in between. Mind you, Haran was a settleable place. It was between Ur and Canaan. To simply put it, Haran was between the past and the future. Friends, this morning, you've got to make up your mind who you are in Christ. Are you a people of the past or are you people of the future? You've got to make up your mind who you are in Christ. Don't be like a squirrel. You know, when, how many of you have seen a squirrel crossing the road? You know, when the squirrel crossed the road, he, you know, he will run to the middle and then he will... Right? Even no car. And then, you know, he will move a bit. Then he will... So, so, right? Always do that. Then when the car comes, it's still... And next thing, what happened? Doop, doop. There goes the squirrel. So a lot of times in life, as a believer in Christ, we know that God has a destiny and purpose for our lives. But a lot of times we come to a place where we... And then what happens is this. We begin to look around and say, May, maybe this, this is a good place to settle. But friends, God has never asked us to be in a settlement. 
He asks us to be in His promise. Friends, let me tell you something. Past-mindedness in present times is disastrous. Future-mindedness in present times is about destiny and purpose. Progressive people are always future-minded. They will never let their past hold them back. Can I hear an amen for that? They will never let the present time, the goodness of the present time to stop them from moving forward. Terah was going to Canaan, but he stopped at Haran. Friends, we read this, it may seem that this is just a physical thing that took place, but what actually happened was that Terah halted in his destiny and purpose. You know, I was just reading and studying this. I asked myself this question. Terah, he took his son Abraham, they were going to Canaan. But then he stopped at Haran. And in that place, God called Abraham out and go to the land that I will show you, the land of promise. So I'm, I'm wondering, if Terah would have continued on, would Abraham even come into the picture to have that call? You understand what I'm saying? Friends, the in-between it's always the most dangerous because it has the appearance of the fool, but in actual fact, it is lesser. Having the form, but doesn't have the substance. People can come so near, but yet so far. When we are in between times, listen to me well. We are meant to be visitors. We are not meant to be settlers. It's okay to visit, but don't stay there. Terah settled for something that was not his destiny, that was not his purpose. Shelter is only for a season, but your destiny is never in your shelter. You remember when, when even Abraham, when he got the promise of God, that one night he was in his tent and he was lamenting and says that, God, who's going to be the heir of, of, of all this? And, you know, he was in his tent and he was like thinking, man, he still don't have a son. That promise has not come to pass. You know what happened? God told Abraham, get out of your tent. That's in Genesis chapter 15. And he asked Abraham to look at the sky in the night. And God told him, that, you know, look at the stars. Are you able to count them? So this shall be your descendants. Friends, Abraham had to get out of his shelter in order to see the picture, the vision of what his life could be. Don't let your shelter be the limitation of your vision. You have to grow bigger than your shelter. Haran is always a place that you feel comfortable it's a place of shelter. Don't need to do much. You just stay there. Just wait. But I tell you what, your promise is not going to come and walk into you. You have to walk to your promise. Yeah. Friends, when God calls you out, He is calling you to a bigger thing. And God will never leave you hanging because He has a destiny for you. He is committed to get it done in your life. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, it says, being confident of this very thing, that He who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So God is not playing games with us. God is not asking us to stay in between. It's either you're all in or you're all out. Friends, getting to your promise is a long journey. And you don't change promises along the way. If that's a promise for you, come on, go all the way. Don't just, you know, some people, they, they go along the way, suddenly they change their promise. You see, friends, when you do that, you may seem to be doing things, but you're not getting to the destination that God has meant for you. Friends, we don't get there when we tend to settle. In the court of law, people settle because it is too costly to continue on. They would rather end up with a settlement. But let me tell you something. Everything comes with a price to pay. The challenge is to keep paying 
till you get there. Friends, the unknown is always uncomfortable, it's always scary. Good is comfort and security. Good is about the now, but destiny is about the future. Friends, I pray that we will not focus on just the good because we need to get from good to the best. And when that happens, there will be changes and challenges. But I tell you what, don't let all these challenges and changes cause our purpose to die. So in Genesis chapter 12, this is, you know, the account of Abraham. God called Abraham out of settlement. They were in Haran. But God told Abraham in chapter 12, get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. But Abraham had to get out of Haran because that promise is not to come in Haran. Friends, when God called Abraham out, it may seem to be uncertainty in human terms, but it was a place of enlarging his vision, expanding his capacity, and extending his reach. It is a time to make ready for his future. If you stay in a settlement, you will not be ready for your future. You've got to look beyond it. Friends, you sow into your future. Your destiny is what you sow into your future. Don't get comfortable with the now. People can get stuck in the moment, especially when there's something good. God will not fulfill His promise in your life until you are ready to step into your destiny. God is not just about shelter, friends. He's about fulfilling His promise over your life. I want to encourage us, I want to challenge us this morning. We have to be ready. If you desire for more of God in your life, we are talking about depth this year. Friends, you've got to be ready to get out of your comfort because nothing grows through comfort. We are very familiar with the term growing pains. Am I right? Yeah. When... You know, when, when you know, I just saw the, the, the video of the camp, you know, and so he was standing in front. At the time, she was pregnant, all right, haven't given birth yet, all right, and, and now, you know, she, she has given birth. And, and, and when you see a child grows up, there's a lot of pain in it. Am I right? It's not easy. If you ask your parents, was it easy to see you growing up? It's difficult. But you see, along the way, there's a lot of changes, there's a lot of challenges. But it's getting you to a place of maturity. And that goes with our lives. As believers in Christ, there will be pain. Pain is the price that we need to pay for growth. I tell you what, growth is not going to happen just because we're standing and had a good worship session. Pain is not, I mean, growth is not going to come just because, you know, every Sunday we hear good messages. Yeah. Growth happens when we are stretched. Yeah. When the things that we, you know, we, 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 we know that there's a promise of God, but it doesn't happen yet. It's, we have to keep going. Yeah. That's pain. But that will bring growth. Bring growth into our lives. Friends, we have to get ready to be uncomfortable this year. If we really truly want to see a greater measure of God in our lives, we've got to be ready for that. Because it's not going to come easy. It's not just going to come just because we are like, oh, you know, let's, let, let, let things just happen. It will not. We need to be very focused. We have to get going. Momentum requires continuous movements. And every one of those movements are directed and focused. It becomes more and more powerful. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So we've got to get going. We've got to get moving. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, we've got to get moving. 
I challenge the prime, the, the, you know, the, in a prime meeting this morning that, you know, this year, would you see yourself at least one person, you're going to lead that person to Christ. I mean, it's great to, to be praying for our friends' salvation, for our family's salvation. We'll continue to do that. But I can honestly tell you this. The answer to that prayer often is us. That God's going to use us to share Christ or to share the goodness of God to them. So we got to get moving. Don't just wish. I tell them, if, if you think that, you know, your friends will come, you know, to know Christ just by coming to church and hear a sermon on a Sunday, I tell you what, there's only one part of it. Because the bigger part is that your day-to-day -day engagement with them, your day-to-day -day opportunity to be able to share the love of Christ with them. So why not make full use of that? We've got to get ready and get moving. Friends, how many of you want to see your friends coming to know Christ? Come on. Okay, not many of you. <laughs> how many of you want to see your family members coming to know Christ? How many of you want to lead someone to Christ this year? Come on. It's going to be uncomfortable. And I was glad when I prayed with a group of young people and they say, God, you know, we, 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 we don't want to be ashamed of your gospel. We want to be unashamed. Give us a bonus that you are real, you are true. To open our mouths to, to, to tell of the goodness of God. And other pray, God, help us to live lives that will, that will be an example that when they see us, they want to know Jesus. You know what, friends? It's not to come easy. It requires changes. Friends, this is the year. 2020. Yes, we believe it's going to be a powerful, great year. But I believe that this is going to be a year we're going to see the power of God moving in and through our lives in such a measure that it involves us. Yeah. Not just God doing it for us, but God doing it with us. Yeah. Amen? So you've got to get moving. And then you've got to go past your past and enter into your present and be ready for your future. Your past and your present, both of them are a reality. But they are not a definity. Because your definity is in your future. Friends, God has never called any one of us to be settlers. But God has called us to be possessors. Friends, there's nothing that's going to be impossible with God. So I want to challenge us. we got to go past our past. Go past our present and to start to have a mind of the future. And that's how we're going to see our lives grow and to become more and more evident of the purpose of God in each and every one of us. Because whatever that we go through right now is just temporal. No matter the good that we go through right now is temporal. No matter the pain that we go through is temporal. Because the day will come where we will enter into the future of our lives that God has for us. And that future is a future of purpose, a future of destiny. Amen. So I want to encourage and challenge each and every one of us. Come on. It needs to be a getting out of the current. I don't know about you. So many people that I know, after a while, they may start off so passionate when they experience God. Oh. But then what happens is this life happens. And then they settle. And they feel that man, it's good, it's a good place. How many of us, how many of us doesn't like good, right? We all like good, right? Because good doesn't push you anywhere. You just like to be in it. But in order from good, not just to the best, but good to your destiny, friends, we got to get out and start moving forward. I tell you what, friends, all these are good. But this is not destiny. You get what I mean? All these things, this is nice. 
But this is not destiny. There's so much that God has for us. So we need to get past our past. Even get past our present. And to know that something is bigger that's ahead of us. So I want to encourage us. Get out of our harans. Because there's not a place for us. Because that place that God has for us is a place of promise. It's a place of purpose. It's a place of possession. Amen. When Joshua went into the promised land, the land of Canaan, he had to possess the land. It was not going to be given to him easy. But you know what? He was prepared for that very moment. So when he went into the land, he became a conqueror. And that is what God is asking us. If we're going to settle, we will never be conquerors. We've got to keep pushing forward. Maybe some of us, we, we have a promise from God and wow, you know, we are really excited at one point in time, but we have come to a place where we settle. Friends, time to get up, get going. Because your destiny is ahead of you. Your future is ahead of you. It's not in the now. God has so much. When I look at Tara, I felt for him. It could have been him, honestly. I think it would be quite different if he would continue on to Canaan. That's at least my my, my thoughts about it. But how many people are like Tara? It could have been. Don't live that kind of life, friends. I would rather take the chance to go towards my destiny than to stay where I am and just end up being a could have been. Remember the possibilities of what the future holds. Friends, let's get going with God. Amen. Whatever that we experienced in, in the past, great, thank God for that. But come on, let's get going. You know, some of us went for a great conference over the weekend and it was amazing. You know, it was great. It was really, you know, inspiring. But you know what, friends? We don't wait for another year to go for another conference like that because that defeats the whole entire purpose. We got to get going. I pray that, you know, that our desire will be so great that, you know, even with all these conferences, that, that, you know, great conference, amazing. I respect them. I love them. But I, I want that kind of desire that God, there's got to be more than this, man. There's got to be more than all this excitement. It's got to be more than all these thousands of people because the future is going to be far greater than, than what it is now. You get what I mean? You know, even church, like, wow, well, you know, it's a good, good season for us. But come on, don't just come and, you know, every, you know, every time when we come to church or being part of this church, it's like, wow, you know, it's, it's, it's good. I pray that we will be like, God, there's got to be more. There's got to be more then all this, this is not destiny. You get what I mean? Come on. You know, are you guys with me this morning? Yeah? There's got to be more for your life. There's got to be more than your studies. There's got to be more than, than your, your work. There's got to be more than the money that you have in your bank account. There's got to be more. Because God has destiny and purpose for each and every one of us. Friends, destiny is about God. This morning, I believe that God, you know, wants a response from us. I believe that, you know, that God has, when He came into our lives, He got us unstuck. He got us unstuck and He has a path for us, He has a way for us, and that way is into the future that He has intended for us. So I want to encourage us, keep moving. Keep moving ahead. 
set your eyes ahead on the author and perfecter of our faith, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Because everything is about Him. Don't stop. There may be distraction along the way that causes you to want to settle. But don't let this distraction become your motivating factor, become your differentiation factor. Let Jesus move you forward. Friends, I believe this morning, come on, let's respond to Jesus. Maybe some of you here, you, you still feel that you are stuck. Maybe it could be that relationship. Maybe it could be your finances. It could be, you know, a lot of things. But this moment you are saying, Jesus, I make a decision. I make that very conscious decision that I'm going to set my eyes on you. I'm going to keep moving forward. I don't care how good or how, you know, how it is right now because I know that my destiny is in my future.